Welcome to Conversate, our podcast where we engage in conversation. And on this week's episode, I, Aaron Gerke, am sitting down with Kevin Bender, and we are also having a conversation with our moms. That's right, the women who raised us. So if you want to hear all of the juicy details, all the stories, all the wisdom, and all the encouragement from these wonderful women of faith, well, this is an awesome conversation. So as always, it's our goal that you'll take something you hear from this conversation and start another faithful conversation with somebody else. As always, we hope you enjoy it. Well, we have to we have to air cheers, everybody. Clink. Cheers. Cheers. Hey. So this is not just uh Kevin and I on the horn today, and we're not even sitting on my brown couch. We are in uh four different states, all bordering each other. Wait, no, we're not in four states. We're in, Joe, I'm in the same state as you right now. We're in three. I'm in Wisconsin. <laughs> ah, shoot. Four would have been cool. Um, but hey, this is uh it's my mom and uh that's my mom. My mom, my mom Lynn over there, and Kevin's mom, Joe. How are you doing? Because as we're um moms, we don't expect that you pay attention uh to what your sons are doing on a daily basis, but we um we're pastors. Did you know that? You did not do that part. So we talk to you sometimes <laughs> and keep you up to date on what's happening in our lives. So, and uh, we are doing a sermon series about wisdom and uh, calling it wise guys. But then uh, we wanted to make sure that people know that God didn't just give wisdom to guys, just to the men, but also to women too. So I just, um, I preached a sermon about Proverbs 31 this last week. And uh, I don't know if that rings a bell to you or not, but to some women, it was like one of these um, passages that they've heard a lot about because it's like this passage that sort of says it's, it's sort of like a, it's sometimes it's called like the excellent wife or like the noble wife. So there's a, sometimes this whole thing about like the Proverbs 31 woman and it gives all these things about like working hard and loving her husband and loving her children and being faithful to God and all this stuff and it, all good stuff. But like sometimes people, I guess, I, I don't know. We're we're calling our moms for wisdom here um, <laughs> because we've heard some things from other women that sometimes these words have been like, uh, like burdensome or sometimes it's like, maybe it feels like uh, the church has given like this uh, almost unattainable picture of what it means to be a woman of faith or something. And so I don't know. Anyways, Proverbs 31, as I said in the sermon, is it's actually, um, it was, it says it's like the words of this guy named King Lemuel, but it actually says it's words that his mom gave to him about how to be a faithful man and how to find a faithful wife. And so we actually thought, Kevin and I thought, um, we actually have our best ideas when we exercise together and then take a sauna together after. Not that, I mean, you've seen us um, at, at our worst, so we don't, you know, you don't need to imagine <laughs> what it's like for us to be in the sauna together. But TMI, I'm sorry. <laughs> I've had a long day, so I'm just saying a lot of words. Um. Anyways, the point of this conversation is we want the people to know our moms and who raised us. We We kind of are curious about maybe what it was like to raise boys, but also you are both uh, women who've raised, uh, thankfully, faith-filled children. A lot mm -hmm. of people who even uh, work in the church. And, uh, and we're just curious, I don't know, like how that went, like, was that something intentional that you really wanted to make happen? I don't know. I'm just kind of reflecting back um, on life. But before we do that, you guys have never even met in person. 
maybe you've never even seen each other. So mom and Joe, do you want to just briefly like introduce yourselves, like where you are living and a little bit about life or what you do for work or something like that? Sure. Sure, I can go. I'm I'm Joe Bender, and I'm Kevin's mom, um, and I live in West Allis, Wisconsin. My husband husband's a pastor, um, and he's at uh, St. Paul's Lutheran Church and School here. Um, we have four other children, one daughter and uh, three other boys. Kevin is number two, number two son. Um, and I was a, I trained to be a teacher, but I never went into it. I it was 21 and I trained to be a high school teacher and just, nah, just didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I, I trained for business subjects. So instead I went into like secretarial work. Um, I was a church secretary with my husband for many years. Also worked with him when his, he was a CPA. Right now, when we got to Wisconsin, I kind of wanted something more in a financial area. <laughs> so I met a collection agency and I processed oh. parking tickets. <laughs> 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 people must love you. <laughs> yeah. I, I I don't I don't call people, so I just work with the government government people and give them their invoices. So, <laughs> well, our oldest son was born in West Dallas at a hospital in West Dallas. Ah, isn't huh. that where the, is the Wisconsin State Fair in West Dallas? Yes, yes, it is the State yeah. Fair. Yeah. Um. We, uh, I'm Lynn, Aaron's mom. Uh, my husband's a pastor also. And uh, we did our, uh, he did his vicarage in not far from West Dallas, um, a Southern suburb of Milwaukee. Anyway, mm -hmm. we spent time there. Um, and we're both retiring in June. Um, and I'm retiring after 25 years at Concordia in the teacher ed department. So I was a teacher and am a teacher. Um, so we're looking five more months. My husband keeps counting down. I never thought he'd ever start counting down, um, but he's pretty excited. So we have two boys. I always wanted to be a mom to boys and we have two boys. <laughs> I, I never thought I would be a mom to boy. I, I just had a sister, but my mom was pretty prophetic. She said, you got a lot of energy, Joe. You're going to be, I think you're going to have boys. <laughs> she was correct. <laughs> Another oracle. Huh? <laughs> from yes. from Mrs. Traeger, Grandma Traeger. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm kind of curious uh, just to kind of, Ask, so like as Aaron alluded to uh, kind of in the opening, um, when we uh, started talking about Proverbs 31 and um, in the Bible class time, actually on Sunday, yeah, there was a number of women uh, who are generations above Aaron and I who kind of alluded again to that picture of like, yeah, this Proverbs 31 woman and even being on like the receiving end of either sermons or teaching or kind of this idea uh, that they felt it was kind of impossible to meet. So there was like a pressure or a burden to fit it up to this standard or this picture that's given in Proverbs 31. And I'm kind of curious because like, as and I don't know if it's because I'm a guy, I had never sort of had that experience. Like Proverbs 31 wasn't exactly like the text on my mind is like the, you know, um, something that was weighty for me, uh, you know, growing up or or in my relationship to Christianity. So I'm kind of curious to hear, yeah, mom from you and Lynn from you, like, had you had that kind of experience, Proverbs 31, or what was sort of your experience with this text, if at all, um, yeah, prior to this conversation? Or maybe even if it's not that text, just like, maybe Christian teaching in general about like what a Christian woman ought, ought to be. If there's, if that is a picture at all. I mean, I never had an experience with that text. Like no one held, held that up to me. Right. Um, <clears throat> that was never a thing. I think, I think upbringing um, led to wanting to be, you know, as, 
moral and upright and ethical, right, um, as possible. Um, but, and, and I think that's something my parents gifted me was a deep desire to be kind and, you know, um, love people. I think it probably wasn't until, you know, marrying someone who chose to be a pastor where pressure to be something maybe that I wasn't or could never be um, happened, right? Um, because I think sometimes, I think sometimes that can be a, a pressure on women who are married um, to people who are who are pastors in the church. I don't know, Joe, if you want to say something about not because it's that Psalm what was it? Psalm what? Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31. Um, but be and maybe it is. I don't know. That wasn't, I mean, that was never something put in front of me. But um, you know, I think I think there are some pressures um from from people from Christian people who who think you should be maybe something that you can't ever, ever, ever be, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah yeah uh, right I mean I I think I've had a maybe a ladies bible study on this but it was years years ago and uh uh and probably I mean probably you know a, a fault of mine is to find fault in myself and so I it kind of yeah, when I hear Proverbs 31, I always think of, oh, man, I'm really falling short and stuff. But, um, but again, you know, we're, um, uh, it's not, we're, you know, we're not, we're not saved by our deeds. We're not, we're not, uh, um, uh, you know, really shouldn't be focusing that much on what, you know, in a good way, focusing on deeds. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so uh, I I think think again it was kind of like, oh man, you know I'm not doing any of this, and and in fact I just was uh, talking to my husband and, about it um, when I was just kind of thinking about it earlier, and I said, you know I've never considered a field and bought it, and he goes my and her, my husband said, well sure you have Joe, you had the inheritance, and um, my my father passed away, and um, I had some inheritance, and one of the things um, I did uh, where I really wanted to do and talked with with um, you know my husband about it was to buy our, our retirement property so so i guess i did <laughs> i think i think there's a verse is there a verse in there that her children are something is there something in that proverbs about that um i think i tried to protect my children from any outside pressures that they would need to be perfect right mm -hmm. um uh i didn't want that for them i'm sure some of that crept in but um because i think people can put pressures on our children um sometimes especially when you're in the public eye like that um and so i think raising them it was always important to me that they didn't that they didn't feel it or hear it, or if they did, we could talk about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I I know I've talked to, uh, I think I think I've talked to Seth about this. Remember, we've talked about it as a family too. Like, I mean, there there's sort of that, uh, there's like the stereotypical pastor's kid idea that that they either go like goody two shoes or they're in jail or something like that. You know? <laughs> You know, um, some I don't know how you know it doesn't seem stereotypically like there's a there's a middle road, you know. But um, at least for for our family, it feels like we were. Uh, and I can't. I I mean, like this is kind of my question is like you know in mothering, how much of what you do do you think is taught versus like caught? You know, like because I can't I can't like think. I, I can't remember you specifically spelling any of that out or saying that, but I, but I recall that as your intention, like, you know, that, um, so I don't, I, I mean, it's just, maybe you hear things so many times or you're growing up, but like, I don't know. I, I, I guess like, 
I mean, mom, you're expressing like your, your hope, you know, your, your desire for your kids, but do you remember like explicitly saying those things or do you think it was just a, a way that you spoke in general to us or I, it was probably the way I spoke in general. Cause I never wanted to call anybody out or anything. Right. But I wanted you to be you. Right. Mm -hmm. I didn't want you to think you had to live up to somebody else's beliefs about how you should act and who you should be. Um, did your little three-year-old temper tantrums sometimes <laughs> worry me <laughs> when we were out in public? Sure, you know, but, I, you know. Me? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's really interesting, Lynn, you know, you bring up a point um, that's maybe, it's like maybe a little heightened, Um in our particular situations, you know, I really hadn't thought of that coming into this conversation, but as a family, you know, in the church connected to church leadership, there can be that added pressure of sort of fitting into a box or idea. And I think, I think Aaron and I's um, experience of that is probably less than um, what, or at least our wives experience of that. Um, I hope, and but I think is maybe less than what you and my mom experienced, um, just kind of based on changes that we see um, in the church and, and sort of those expectations that go along with like the pastor's wife. Um, but I think universally too, there's sort of a danger, right, for Christians. Uh, well, I think that, what's that old saying? Like, you know, the church is not... Um, you know, an art gallery or a museum, you know, of the saved, but a hospital for the sick. Mm -hmm. Right. So kind of, again, uh, you know, there's, there's that danger for all Christians to enter into the church space, thinking that we need to, to sort of posture ourselves uh, in a way that maybe fits idyllic pictures when that's not, it's not the case. Like if we're honest with ourselves and the point of the gospel um, is, to be able to say, yeah, it's, you know, life is messy and it's, we're not perfect because we have done everything right. But, um, but because God has come in to basically uh, walk with us in the messiness of it. I am curious if y'all are willing to share. So just context for listeners. Uh, you know, we have two dominant boy families, uh, which I imagine comes with some amount of messiness uh can you think is there any particular stories uh or little episodes that come to mind i guess you you already alluded lynn to you know three-year-old tantrums which i haven't heard about so i'm really happy for you to share any more content of that uh style that i can then now, share. This, is, this was not my proudest mother moment and had i known then don't you wish joe you could go back and parent now that you know what you know <laughs> yes gosh anyway um, I one time left Aaron in the cereal aisle crying because he couldn't get a box of cereal he wanted. And I walked around to the next aisle because I just, I was just over it and I could really hear him screaming by then. So I, I did go back and get you. And I think we left the store, but. I haven't had cereal since. <laughs> I want to know what box was it? I don't even <laughs> know. And I'm sure he was only like two and a half. Um, but so messy though, Kevin, you want a story that I wasn't there for? Sure. Did you hear the Twinkie story? Have you heard the Twinkie story, Kevin? I, I, I vaguely, I have a sense of where this is going, but you should tell it. Should I tell it, Aaron? Go for it. I only heard this story like 10 years after it happened, maybe 15, I don't know, but they were in high school, maybe middle school and high school. And we went out, dad and I went out to dinner or something. And there was a new box, probably what, 15 Twinkies in a box. I don't know, Aaron. Don't know. And you guys started, you told me you guys had a altercation over the Twinkies and before you knew it, all 20 Twinkies were open and you had a Twinkie fight and there was Twinkies everywhere in the kitchen. And you, then you guys looked at each other and like, Oh my goodness, we have to clean this up before mom and dad get home. And they did. We had, we were none the wiser 
I probably didn't even notice the Twinkies were gone, but um, messes. That is awesome. Clean it up. See, you just clean it up. Nobody knows. Put it on your back. Right. Boy messes. One more. We had used to when Aaron was three and he loved um, Matchbox cars. We, if he'd get them out, either Bob or I would go. He's got the Matchbox cars, and we'd have to run and sit by him because there was this big picture window in the parsonage, and he liked to throw Matchbox cars, and we didn't want one going out the window. So oh, one no. of us would quick start playing Matchbox cars with him so they wouldn't go out the window. Well, and your mom, your mom, your mom tells a story that when they came to visit and I was like three or something and I, I had a ball or something and I Back said, in the family room, yeah. yeah, I said to grandma, grandma, I'm going to throw this ball at that light. And she's like, oh no, Aaron, you won't do that. And I was like, no, I'm going to throw it. She's like, no. And I chucked it and broke the light. So <laughs> take me <laughs> out of work, yeah. grandma. <laughs> Aaron, that reminds me so much of the stories you've told of other objects that were not supposed to break. I mean, this one, you know, it was like you start at a young age. <laughs> I got to add that one into the story. It started young. Yeah, exactly. Those Mom, just, what about you? Those I, are just funny, cute stories. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I was just thinking, you know, when, when you were really young, I mean, you were pretty chill. You were kind of a chill dude. Yeah. You were pretty smiley, happy, like to watch your older brother and stuff. But uh, the thing that comes to mind, though, is you were you were active, <laughs> like walking out of the parsonage and finding you up in the top of the uh, pine tree. You know, so you were a climber, as your broken arms attest. <laughs> so tell, yeah. mm -hmm. tell my mom how many broken arms Kevin has had. Oh God, is it? It was it seven. Seven broken arms, I no, believe. No, I oh. wish that would have been seven. Would have been a perfect number, scripturally no. speaking. But <laughs> was it only six? Six. six. <laughs> and it's okay. no work. Yes. Oh, and one was just horrible. I mean, this artery was just lying over the broken bone, and I. Oh, yeah. It was. It was just horrible. That was the worst. Yeah, that was the worst one. But I was either too young or too traumatized by that when I have suppressed <laughs> that uh, memory. <laughs> you were pretty that. young too. That was in Nevada, so you were. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Probably that was like the first one. Or so. Probably. Um, yeah. You like that courage. Yes. From, I feel like that courage when you have an older brother to watch, you just get, you're just like, nothing seems hard, right? <laughs> like, you know, we, Aaron, you'd go to the top of the trees and the hospital was across the street. And I got a call from a nurse one time. She was in a patient room and she said, your little boy is up in the tree. And it was just a little elm tree on the boulevard. And he was up at the top. He couldn't have been more than four years old. I said, yeah, he does a lot. <laughs> Small town. This, we lived across the street from the hospital. So somebody from church told their, like, look, is looking across at the, you know, at our house and sees me in the tree, tells the nurse, the nurse calls mom. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just curious. Our, our wives are not here to defend themselves, but since you love them and will speak the best about them, just curious about like, I don't know, when you have boys that are being, that, that you're raising, at what point do you start to think about like their future marriage and what that might be? be like or what you hope for that or how you speak into that or lead into that like I, I don't know at what point do you think I don't know or were there hopes or dreams or I don't know I'm just curious yeah I think we um uh and, it's, and probably more my husband prodding it but but we would we would occasionally pray um you know for the a future spouse for our kids um yeah and uh gosh and then probably i'm trying to think back probably teenage years you know when when like kevin started dating and um yeah th th those would be those would be times, you know, say a lot of prayers. And <laughs> prayers for sure. I remember Bob yeah. always saying, you know, praying for future spouses. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I mean, I imagine when you went off to college that I assumed 
you probably meet someone. Um, uh, I guess that's what I started thinking about it. But I knew I'd love whoever you chose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I just think like, Yours looks frozen. huh? Is it? Yeah. I, I keep getting a thing saying my Oh, internet. Is not anymore. I keep saying my internet is unstable. Free hotel internet. So the audio is staying stable. So I think we're good. Um. Yeah. I mean, and that's, I, that's the thing where it's like, you know, uh, I think with parenting, uh, teaching in general, I mean, I think like, I think the, the modeling is so important, you know, I think like there's a statement that I've heard, like um, you'll, um, you'll, I think it's like, you'll teach what you know, but you'll reproduce what you are or something like that. So you can, you can only, you can teach so much, but like who you, who you are, that's what, that's what is 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 reproduced and so i think there's mm. i think there's uh wisdom in that and so i think probably the the model that you set as moms is just as um uh it says it says even more than probably the words that you even spoke you know even in a, in a cumulative effect um so yeah i'm just uh just trying to think about that, you know, like as, as men and as pastors, as we try to shepherd all people, um, including our wives and daughters, <laughs> but also, um, you know, a lot of women in the church too, like, uh, how to encourage them and, uh, support, um, and, and like strive, uh, like in the, in the uh, in the message, it, it was interesting. I, I actually we have a lot of college students at our church, and um, the the feedback that I got after church, um, you know, a lot of times people will come out and be like, "Hey, nice message, pastor," or whatever. The most feedback that I got were from um, like some college women, like college students. Um, <laughs> one college student uh, normally comes to our first service, but she was at the second service. And she said, yeah, I slept in today, but my friends were at the first service and they said that the sermon was so good that I needed to come. And so I wanted to come and hear it. And she's like, it was so encouraging. And um, I really needed like that um, to hear that, that message. Like, I don't know. It was, it was sort of like the, I don't know. I brought in like stuff about, I don't know. I, I think it was, it's like a bold, a, <laughs> it's a bold word in our culture today to speak about the uniqueness of male and female. And like that, that, that's a unique, like, that's a great thing. And that's a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I even said like to say that male and female, like that, those things are equally exchangeable in all things that that actually diminishes the uniqueness and can actually be kind of demeaning to women of, of like the, the beautiful thing that it is that God created them to be and, and unique to be. And, and that the, it's, it seems like the world puts a lot of messages. I mean, it does to men, but it feels like it, I don't know. It feels like it does, especially to women about like some sort of standard, you know, whether it be your, your tidy house or your perfectly behaved children or your children that are involved in every activity or your children that go to college or your, you know, husband that loves you or your vehicle that you drive or like, I don't know. It, it it seems like it seems like a lot of the burden of of like being something that you're not seems to fall upon um women more than it does upon men culturally and i don't i don't know i don't know if that if that resonates with you or not I, um i think you are wise women in that you have lived years not that you're old no, you're old. You're old enough to retire if you want, but you're not old. But I, I, I just, I think that those pressures are maybe even a stronger on younger generations, especially like moms uh, today. I don't. I mean, I'm just curious if you have heard that or sensed that. The young women I work with at in the teacher ed program, there's a lot of them struggling with stress and anxiety. Um, and I, I, 
I sometimes believe it's a lot of the social media messages that women get. Um, I'm sure men get them, but I think there's a lot more out there for women to consume around um, how you should be and how you should look and um, what you should do. And, um, you know, uh, you know, ar just around everything, around career, around body image, around, mm -hmm. you know, how to parent, all that all that. Um, and I think, um, Kevin, you talked about it, you know, the gospel, you know, there's the gospel holds us up when we can't do what Proverbs says. And somehow when you're talking to these young women, if you're, if you're talking about, you know, how, help us with the women we minister to, I think it's just helping them see that they're unique and lovely in, in who they are and they should pursue what's in their heart, right? And and not what's being held out there as some perfect image. Uh, Cause that's never, ever, ever attainable, ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I think one thing I learned um, over the years was, you know, I kind of beat myself up a little bit about, I, I thought I really wanted to be a teacher and I love learning about teaching and, and, but I just didn't go into it. And, and partly was, it was high school and I was 21 and anyway. Um, but, uh, but I think as, as the years went by, it's, it's like, you know, let, you know, just let it go. You're, you're who God created you to be. And you've done, you know, you, you've done what you've done and, doing things is not as important as who you, who you are, you know, and like at the mm -hmm. end, like that, that, uh, mm, uh, the quip that people have said is, you know, at the end of your life, are you going to look back and say, oh, I, you know, I did all those gr great jobs and, you know, or whatever, or are you going to look back on your family and, and your relationships? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. For sure. mm -hmm. so that, that, that was, uh, hits me, uh... <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Oh, sorry, mom. Didn't mean to interject on you there. But just uh, there's a brother pastor of ours uh, uh, who put recently out uh, three different little uh, blog posts talking about uh, what he sees is a pressure to be what we're not. And he, he categorized them by saying, you know, I, the, and these are the cultural lies. He said, I am uh, what I have or I am what I do which is what I hear you just talking about, or I am what others say about me. Mm -hmm. um, and what I hear coming strongly from the both of you um, is that no, above all of those things, those, I mean, these are all pieces of our identity. Sure. Like there are going to be things you might share with others, you know, when you're doing a meet and greet, but your identity far above any of, of, of what those things say about you is what God says about you and so that identity you know as daughter or son uh, of god uh, forgiven redeemed um you know i think aaron in your sermon you you kind of put it uh, phrase it as you know you are enough as you are uh, and that's sort of again yeah that beautiful picture the gospel gives uh to us that um, it's not it's not a course that we have to attain <laughs> for ourselves um but it's the reality yeah. of yeah god coming in and uh and loving us even as we are and that sort of i think gives us maybe sort of motivates or drives us to operate in a way that actually ends up being is sort of at least getting towards that idyllic picture you know mm -hmm. i mean even thinking about my experience of our house, you know, growing up. Yeah, it wasn't perfect. <laughs> I could I could tell a whole lot of stories to uh to animate that. And yet, you know, here I am today in in spite of those things, right? Like somehow in the mix of all the uh <laughs> the goofy or even the broken, the harder, you know, things, um God's God's grace has worked it so that you know hey i still want to come home for vacation you know for christmas i want to bring my wife and kids around um uh, you know around those who raised me and um i think that's an ongoing testament to uh, the things that were uh probably taught but also also caught so 
Thank you, Mom. And thank you, Lynn, uh, because I also have been on the receiving end of that same grace, uh, just in my working relationship with Aaron as well. So thank you, Aaron, as well. I like um, what you said. Oh, I was just going to say, ahead, no, Mom. when you said, Kevin, we 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 know what God says about us because it's it's in the word. And I think what what stresses a lot of young people out is the stories they make up about themselves, what they think mm others are saying about them when it's not even true and you know turning them back to maybe we should let me show you what really is said about you you know I liked what you I liked what you, the point you were making there mm. so we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up but moms you you get if you want in addition to anything that you've said do you have any other final words that you want to say or any other stories you want to tell I, I mean now that i'm a grandmother <laughs> oh, yeah. I, now i really wish i had if, if i could go back i would have played more with my kids <laughs> mm -hmm. instead of making sure that everything was clean and laundry was done yeah we're mm -hmm. coming down with the trash bag you know we're ready to pick up uh, the toys that are gonna be gone forever yeah <laughs> <laughs> that is true that. joe that is true joe you know um caring more about picking things up but um <laughs> no i just i just wish i would have known then what i know now <laughs> and you know so it's fun when sometimes i don't go well what would you do or something it's kind of fun to then have that second chance right <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> yeah. awesome well thank you both for uh humoring us and um and putting up with us for giving birth to us and feeding us <laughs> and uh, changing and wiping our butts and all that stuff. We really appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> and so much more. We love you, moms. I love you, Aaron. Lord. Love you guys too. Love you, Kevin. Well, with that being said, we have cheers one more time. All right. Cheers. Cheers. cheers.